Welcome back, fuckers. Alrighty, in today's episode, we are going to be diving into the mission editor. So a lot has changed since my uh, my, list, my last DCS mission editing for dummies series. Um, and I figured the best way to do it is to run through a actual making a mission. I'm going to make it from scratch all the way through to finish. And at the very end, we will fly the sortie um, together and I'll make the other uh, file available for download if you don't want to make the mission or you can fly the mission by yourself that you made with your own bare hands and uh, get into the mission editor. So we want to try and, well, I want to try and make uh, the mission editor less intimidating for you guys because that is essentially what makes DCS World so good. It gives you so many options, unlimited options of missions, sorties, opposition, scenarios that you can come up with. Whatever you can think of in your head, you can have a crack at making in DCS World. Obviously, there's limitations to the mission editor, but for the most part, it's an extremely powerful tool to make some real cool missions for you to fly yourself or to fly and fly with your mates or make them. And if you really, really get into it, you can start getting into the top tier uh, mission maker guys like uh, Baltic Dragon and all that kind of stuff that are making the campaigns that you can buy on the Eagle Dynamics website. All right, so you can take this as far as you want. This is, again, a very basic mission editor uh, entry level thing because I am not very smart with. Um, computers i don't i don't work with computers i literally type with two fingers i am not computer savvy whatsoever so if i can figure this shit out i've got 100 percent faith that you guys can figure it out as well so first things first we're going to get into our main menu page and we have a look at our settings our options up here so you're going to click on that and what we're looking for here is on the miscellaneous tab all right we have got our this one here okay our editor auto save interval so dcs world never used to have a auto save feature it does now by default it'll be turned off all right so you're going to check it and then you can set the auto save interval so you can have it it'll save once every 60 minutes it'll say and then all the way to one to one minute so we're going to leave it at three okay so every every three minutes i want it to save my mission because um the mission editor does sometimes like to throw a spinner in the works and it'll just crash the desktop randomly. It's just, it is what it is. And if you haven't saved regularly, it screws you over. All right, so that is that part there. We're also going to have a look in our gameplay tab here. And all of this stuff is gonna be mirrored in your, um, your mission editor, all right? So F10 views, you can have it so you can only see allies only on the map. You can see, um, you can enable F10 map user marks. You can edit the icon style, Russian or NATO. All right, and I'll try and, I'll try and remember what the difference is between those. Units, Imperial, so that's gonna be in uh, feet and nautical miles or meters and kilometers for metric. And then labels, all that kind of stuff. And that is what we're going to pretty much cover in the options page for the mission editor okay so set that up this is your, your kind of your default what all your missions will be um, made with as a general the default settings so now coming over to our main menu page on the right hand side we are going to go to mission editor now click on that and it's going to bring up this page we're going to go create new mission when you first jump in the mission editor it's going to bring up this little page Okay, new mission settings, choose map. So in here, you're going to have all the maps that you have available to you. So Syria, Persian Gulf, Normandy, and Nevada are all uh, purchasable on the Eagle Dynamics website. I believe, don't quote me on this, but I believe the Marianas is a free map. I can't remember if it is or not. Um, but pretty much the Caucasus and the Marianas map are the two free ones, okay, that you can choose. If you don't have the Nevada, Normandy or Persian Gulf or Syria, if you don't have any of these map options that I do, it just means you haven't bought or downloaded the map, okay? So we're gonna go with Caucasus because that is definitely a default map that everyone will have and we need to use that um, so you guys can all play along and make a mission at home. Our coalition presets, by default, it will be on modern, okay? And it's pretty much, uh, straightforward. So if you want a particular country, so we'll just pick Egypt, for example, 
If I want there to be a red forward team, I'm just going to click the red arrow. If I want them to be neutral, I click the gray dot. If I want it to be blue four, I click the blue. Okay, so blue four, neutral, red. You just select the country you want, pick its side. Once you have, if you want to tweak, so that's your default modern default there. If you want to add or take away countries or your coalitions, once you've done that, you can also hit save and it will bring up in your custom. So I've made that one there. That's what I've made. I've uh, added those countries to the red side. Okay, all those factions, I should say. So USAF aggressors, Syria, South City. I don't know why that is there, but whatever. Um, you can make your own red four teams. Okay, red four and blue four and neutral countries. Done. Press OK. Loading up. If your loading screen takes forever to load up the mission editor and load the game, chances are you are running on a, a normal hard drive on your game. If you haven't already, I would strongly suggest that you put DCS World on a solid state hard drive, all right? On an SSD, even better on an M.2 drive. Okay, the fastest hard drive you can possibly get, put DCS World on it because this um, takes up a lot of space, uses a lot of computer power, and it makes a massive difference having DCS World on a solid state drive as compared to a regular hard drive. The loading times are going to be out of control different okay so if you're running it on a normal hard drive your first upgrade should be for your computer get a solid state hard drive to run dcs off okay trust me you will fucking appreciate it okay so this is our mission editor right here so we've got our caucus map caucasus map and we have got basic controls you can zoom in and out with a mouse wheel zoom in zoom out you can right click and hold and you can drag the map around zoom in move the map around okay that's your basic interface on how to use the map we've also got a ruler tool here which is helpful when you're trying to figure out how far something is all right and it's going to give you a distance in nautical miles or if in the uh, the general in the options on the main menu on the the gameplay if you selected uh, metric this will be in kilometers and meters okay and then with our icons it's going to relate to our, our units, and I'll show you that in a second. So you got that, and there's also a new cool thing here, which is a draw tool. So we can put marks on the map. All right, and they stay there. You can have it so, uh, let's go back here, click on that. You can adjust the opacity. Uh, that one won't. So you can have it full red, All right? You can do things. You can change the shape. Okay, we got rectangle, rectangles. You got free. Come on, you bastard! Stuff you can do. Your arrows. All right, you can change the color. Whatever you want. Okay. Um, we've also got, uh, you can draw a line, free line. You can change the thickness, all that stuff. Okay. So that is really cool. It just adds a little bit more flavor. You can put text box in there, change the color of the text. You can put icons down. All right. All that stuff. You've got options there. Helpful, helpful, helpful. So that never used to be in a mission editor either. All right. So next thing, we've got our red circle, red circle, and our blue circle. So that is your bullseye um, when you're making a mission. If you are using an AWACS, right, the airborne warning uh, aircraft, this is what it's going to use as its bullseye. So if you want to um, use uh, picture updates, move, make sure. You use the bullseye, move this bullseye to where you want the picture update to be from. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't stress it. That's a bit more of an advanced thing. If you are going to use uh, bullseye calls from AWACS, that is where the AWACS will refer to from this position here. Okay, that's it's going to use when you request a picture update from the AWACS. It is going to refer off of the lat long of your blue or red if you're red for. Okay, so that is your picture update there. Next thing, 
we're going to run through. This little bad boy here. All right, so this is called DCS Scratchpad. I'll put the link in the description for the download for this bad boy. Download it, install it, and then once you've got it installed, you just press left control, left shift, x-ray to bring it up and bring it down. And what it is essentially is a scratch pad or a notepad that works inside of DCS World. Okay, it works inside of there. And it, um, you can drag it around. It works on the entire game. So if you're on the main menu, it works. If you're in the mission editor, it works. If you're in the game, it works. Control shift X-ray brings it up, brings it down, and it's a notepad. So if you want to write down coordinates, you can open up this rather than having a pen and paper out or alt tabbing onto another screen. You can just have this it's essentially a notepad in DCS. But I can't really explain it much more. Super good. Definitely recommend getting that and adding it to your DCS uh, arsenal to make your life easier. All right. That being said, let's um, bring that up. And this is what we're going to use to make our first mission in the Mission Editor together. So today's mission, we are going to be doing a CAS mission, all right? CAS mission, and it is going to be called Operation Avalanche Predator. So the, what we're going to cover today, we're going to make a weather, we're going to go through the weather presets, we're going to use triggers and we're going to make this mission from start to scratch following this template that I've made. So I wrote all this out myself um, and I would strongly recommend if you're going to start making missions, the easiest way to make a mission is to have a script or a mission outline and then make the mission around your script. Okay, so I've gone through and I've um, sat down and thought about what I want to do for the mission and I've written it all down. So that now I can, in the mission editor, I can just make the mission fit the script. Okay, so let's read him out. So um, I want it to, at the start of the mission, we're going to put a mission start text. It's going to have a, a briefing. When you're ready, check in via the F10 radio and select which mission will be you will be taking part in today. And we're also, uh, where is it? Wait, one, closed it, didn't I? Of course I did. All right, I'll, I'll put in, um, I'll find it in a second, and I'll put it in the top. So there'll be a, a mission outline, okay, a bit of a description of the, the mission, and then we're going to actually have the mission. So the goal of this is we're going to make three Maybe four, but we're definitely going to do three separate missions inside of the one mission file, all right? And our first one we're going to do is a CAS mission or a ground attack, okay? Ground strike mission for a ground pounder aircraft. So I've gone through and I've uh, written up a quick little spiel here. So CAS mission, it is called Operation Avalanche Predator. Fucking what a name, eh? Mission briefing. Intelligence reports from NATO surveillance drones have uncovered an enemy position on the coastline near the town of Chuaps, located in Group Square EJ08. So if we just move this out of the way. So we got our grid square there, EJ. Zoom in. EJ35. We're going to keep going up. EJ08. There is our grid square and there is our town of Chuaps. Okay. Sweet. First part done. And again, I just wrote this before I started making the mission. So I picked that's where I'm going to make my, uh, my convoy. It appears that the enemy force is currently being resupplied by a convoy of logistics vehicles with a small armored escort element. The surface-to-air threat is considered medium, with unverified sightings of man pads and AAA in the area. Your primary objective is to destroy the supply convoy to prevent further reinforcement of frontline troops. Any other military assets in the area are considered secondary targets and can be engaged once the primary mission is complete. Intel, a vehicle convoy of approximately 10 vehicles, is expected. All right, let's uh, change that. That's too many vehicles. A convoy of approximately 10 vehicles is expected, but be prepared for more as drone imagery. As drone imagery is a few days old now. The last known position of the enemy was, and we're going to put in our coordinates with the elevation. Next one is support. So we're going to have two A10C warthogs available to assist in the destruction of the supply convoy if required and can be requested via the F10 radio menu. And we also have coalition cap fighters 
on standby, ready to scramble if needed, and can be contacted also by the F10 radio menu. AWACS will be on station and is on radio frequency 250 megahertz. All right, so we're going to make a mission to fit that script. I'm going to kick things off. We're going to go with the weather presets. So I'm just going to close that. So over here on the left-hand side, we've got this little cloud-looking icon. You mouse over it, it says date, time, and weather. We're going to click on that. This is our weather and time for the mission. So our mission by default will start on the 21st of June, 2016 at 8 o'clock in the morning. And we'll have a light scattered to cloud option. So if you want to change, we're going to move it to September. And if you click on the sun and moon here, it gives you a little preview now. So when I drag the slider, it's going to adjust the time of day. And it's going to give you a little graphic of when, like, okay, so pretty much 7.20 in the morning is sunrise. And pretty much 7.25 in the afternoon is sunset. All right, and the moon comes up at like almost midnight, starts popping up. All right, so we're going to go for right on a sunrise. We'll make that 20. All right, 7.20, right on sunrise so that we've actually got a bit of um, a bit of shadow, nicer lighting. It looks better. If you just put it at midday, all right, it just doesn't look very nice. Okay, the, uh, the conditions it just looks bland. So lighting has a lot to do with it. We're also going to click on the actual image of the cloud here, and it's going to bring up your preset clouds. So you can either have nothing, so it's a totally blue sky. There's not a cloud in the sky. You can have light scattered. It's got all these different options. It's got a kind of a picture of what you're kind of going to be looking at in the mission editor. So we're going to go with high scattered number three. All right, I just like that one. Mainly because you can adjust the base level of the cloud and high scattered three, the base level starts at 17,000 feet or 18,000 essentially. So if you've got A-10s doing ground attack, um, you know, they can be high enough so they're out of uh, AAA range that they can still uh, use their targeting pods. They're not having to look through clouds and stuff. All right, but you can muck around with that as much as you want. You can change the, uh, the base level of cloud. So if you put it 12,000, the cloud layer will start at 12,000 feet upwards. And then if you drag it all the way up to the other side, pretty much 18,000 feet. So we're going to leave it 18,000. Um, you can add wind to the mission if you would like to, right? Just muck around with that. Totally fine. Go for it. I'm not going to bother with that. Okay, we're just doing a basic mission here, so we're not going to get too carried away. And that is our weather presets done. We're also going to go file. We're going to press save, and we're going to call this um, YouTube Mission Editor. Loop YouTube mission editor, and we're going to press OK to save. Now, there we go. Bottom left, it'll have the name of the mission YouTube mission editor. You can see up in the top right now that uh, auto backup feature we selected it tells you how long in how many seconds it's going to press, it's going to make a save. All right, so in two minutes and 35 seconds, it will save our mission state as it is right now, just to save you the heartache if you just spent an hour make, mucking around the mission editor and it crashed the desktop and then you lost everything. All right, so weather presets we have covered. Check, mission audio and mission start text. All right, so I'm also gonna put the link in the description of the YouTube video that I found that let me do the mission audio, right, in uh, to make these audio clips for this mission, right? And uh, shout out to Gaz Ace is his name. He's on YouTube. I'll put a link to his channel as well in the description. Make sure um, if you want to get into mission editing, this is a super cool video to do. It's going to allow you to make um, an audio text file, which is going to speak your uh, mission briefing and just makes your mission more authentic, more realistic, a bit more immersion into the mission as well. So uh, check out the link in the description as well. If you want to muck around with audio files, you don't have to. It's just totally, you know, this is totally just extra stuff that you can do, just making your mission a little bit more polished. Um, but we're going to get ourselves now 
into the first part of the mission. So it's going to be, we're going to go into the triggers. Okay, so down here, underneath the MIS, you've got your create mission briefing, date, time, weather. The next one down is called set rules for trigger. Okay, so this is our trigger button. Our triggers are essentially how you make things happen in the mission. So if I want a, uh, a certain thing to occur in the mission, I'm going to use a trigger to make that happen. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a mission audio trigger. So we're going to come in here. First thing I like to do, eight, and we're going to call this mission start and then another six, seven, eight. Okay, and then for the action, I'm going to put begin playing actor. So all this is, we change the color here to, we'll make it uh, yellow. All this is, is just making it easier to manage your trigger system. Okay, your triggers, because you're going to have a lot of triggers. We're going to have a lot of triggers by the time we finish this mission. It's just going to make it easier for you to understand and look at this stuff and go, okay, um, it makes more sense. So when you do a trigger or when you make a trigger, it needs to have an action, right? It needs to have an action. And because I don't want this to disappear, so if I make another one, so if I clone this, clone, but now I just delete this one. Okay, so I've got one of these triggers. It's got begin playing actor, and begin playing actor does nothing. Okay, it does nothing, but the reason why I put begin playing actor in is because this one, okay, it's the exact same thing, but it doesn't have an action. There's no action in here. So if I close the trigger, okay, the trigger box, I'm going to close it. Uh, close. And then I open it back up. You can see that second trigger has disappeared. And it disappeared because there was no action. So make sure if you're like halfway through a trigger and you're like, oh, shit, I forgot what that was. Before you close the trigger action, make sure you put at least begin playing actor so that it won't delete your trigger because I guarantee at some point you'll do it and you're like, damn it, I forgot to put a uh, action in. And I'm going to rewrite the whole thing again. So now we've got that. Now we're going to put all of our mission start triggers, Okay, all of our triggers that are going to fire at mission start are going to be under here, Okay, under this. So the trigger type, we've got once, repetitive action, switch condition, and mission start. So once is what we're going to, worry with we're not going to really muck around too much with uh, any of the other trigger types for this one so just the trigger type will be once the name of the trigger get into the habit of writing the what the trigger does as the name so then you can look at it and go what the hell is that trigger for oh mission audio so we're going to write mission audio okay mission audio the conditions for the trigger to fire so this is um what has to happen before the action occurs. And we've got heaps of options here. So you're going to go on your conditions box, you're going to come down, you're going to select new, and you're just going to have all of these options. You can mouse through them or okay, scroll wheel, all of them. We'll cover the ones that we're going to use for a basic mission on the fly. So we're going to scroll down here, and we're going to keep scrolling until we get to time more. We're going to click on time more. What this trigger is saying, time more. So when you start the mission, you uh, load the mission up, jump in the jet, and as soon as the mission loads into existence, a timer starts, your mission timer starts, how long the mission has been going for. That is what your time more is referring to in this case. So we're saying once the mission starts, we want after, we're going to go 30 seconds. Okay, so 30 seconds after we've loaded the mission in, we want it to, in the action now, we're going to go to new, I'm going to scroll down, and we're going to say, sound to coalition. Okay, so the coalition, you can choose red, blue, or neutral. We want the sound to go out to our blue coalition. All right, and the coalition means that any player that's in a blue slot, okay, when you choose your uh, aircraft slot, it's going to play this audio to every single player. The audio file is we're going to select this one. So again, the link 
to how to do this for the video by Gazace is in the description below. So if you want to um, make your own audio files, that's the link. That's the video. Watch it and get amongst it. So this is what it sounds like. Coalition forces have been tasked with the protection of the southeastern flank of Navarrosisk airfield. Okay. All right. So it's going to give a an audio uh, mission outline, I guess. Description on what's happening just to make it feel you spawned in the jet 30 seconds later, your headphones will fire up and then you'll hear this in your cockpit. Okay, it'll play that audio file in the cockpit. All right, Sound of Coalition, blue mission start. We're also going to put another one in. Okay, another action. We're going to scroll down and we're going to go to message to coalition. So now we're going to put a text message in. Same deal, coalition is blue and the text message I'm going to copy that right there. Right, you uh, not cut it. We want to copy. So control C in the text, control V, done. We want this to display for how many seconds? Display. All right, so we'll leave it on 10. Always select clear view because um, it makes the, the text box. I'm sure if you've played a mission, you've seen the text box come up in the top right. That's what this is doing. It's putting a text message into the mission that you can read. And if you don't select clear view, the text box box is fully blacked out and you can't see through it. If you choose clear view, it's kind of, um, it's opaque. You can see through it as well. So it's not like blocking your screen up. You can still see through the text. And we're going to put a delay on this audio or this uh, text message because at this mission start uh, text file, uh, sorry, audio file that I made, at 28 seconds into the audio file, it actually says, when you are ready, check in via the F-10 radio and select which mission you will be taking part in today. All right, so I want my message to pop up when it says, the audio says, when you are ready, I want it to pop up at the same time. So we're gonna put a delay of 28 seconds, okay? That's our first one done. So again, we'll cover nice and slowly. Our trigger is called mission audio. The condition for the trigger to fire is going to be time more than 30 seconds after mission start. So at 30 seconds after the mission has been running, it's going to play a sound to the blue coalition and it's going to play the audio file. Coalition forces have been tasked with the protection of the southeastern flank that one. Our next trigger that's going to fire, or sorry, our next action, I should say, is going to display a message, a text message to the Blue Coalition. The text will say, when you're ready, check in via the F-10 radio and select which mission you'll be taking part in today. It's going to be on the screen for 10 seconds. It's going to be in clear view, and it's going to be delayed 28 seconds. So in 28 seconds, it is going to fire off. Okay, so, and this start delay isn't uh, in relation to the mission condition trigger. It's in relation to as soon as this trigger fires. So at 30 seconds, it's going to make these actions occur. So this uh, sound file will play, and then this will wait till 28 seconds after, and then it will pop up the text. Okay, hopefully that made sense to you. So we have done that, and mission start text done and done all right so what we're going to do now i'm just going to quickly put in an aircraft up at nova so we're going to be using nova rosic as our airbase i'm just going to click here don't stress too much on this i'm just going to put in an aircraft in just to test that trigger and show you that it works so we're going to select f18 uh, we'll cover all this in a second as well, guys, when we put uh, units in. So if you never use the uh, how to put a unit in, don't stress. I'm just quickly putting in just to test a trigger. All right, so we're going to uh, we'll save it. Always save. I'm going to press fly mission. I'm going to press start. Okay, we're going to jump in our aircraft. turn the battery on so we've got a timer all right so there is our mission start timer 
So at 30 seconds here, I speed up time by pressing left control Zulu. Tap it a couple times. And then shift Zulu puts it back to normal time. So at 30 seconds, we should get the audio. Coalition forces have been tasked with the protection of the southeastern flank of Navarrosisk airfield. The area of operations spans and from 28 seconds later airfield to 58 seconds the coast to Sochi airfield. There are multiple coalition operations Should occurring fire. along the coast, including anti-shipping in the Black Sea that need to be accomplished in order to restore order to the civilian populace. When Boom. you are ready, yeah. check in via the F-10 radio and select which mission you will be taking part in today. There we go. So that worked. All right, so we delayed it, and then it just happened to so so happened to match up with the audio. 28 seconds later, it fired up the text. The text popped up. It stayed on the screen for 10 seconds, and then it disappeared. So that trigger is totally good. Golden. All right, so that's good to go. We know that worked. We just tested it. It did exactly what we wanted. So 30 seconds after mission start, it played the sound file. And then an additional 28 seconds after the sound file started playing, it displayed the text for 10 seconds in clear view. What I like to do, once a trigger has been tested by me, I make it green. Green for good to go. If I haven't mucked around with the trigger, I just leave it as white. So if a trigger is white, it means to me, and again, this is just how I work through a mission. If it's white, it means I haven't tested it yet. Okay, and I need to test it before I move on to the next one. So that is our first trigger done. All right, so now we're gonna get into our mission brief. All right, so I'm just going to copy this, the entire thing. Bastard. V, keep running, keep cutting it instead of copying. Control C and get rid of that. So this one here. Okay, underneath the MIS, you've got the little notepad looking thing, the note clipboard. Create mission briefing. We're going to click on that. We're going to go down to blue task. I'm going to click on there and I'm going to paste in that brief there. Okay, mission briefing right there. All right, so that, make it look neat. Go done, 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 done. Lovely. Close that now. I'm gonna go file, press save. I'm gonna show you what that did. So we're gonna fly mission, press start. Now your mission briefing is gonna pop up right here on the mission overview. So when you first jump into the aircraft, the briefing page, that is what we just put in. So objective, cast mission, okay, and again. That is just that, that we just copied into that blue uh, tasks. Okay, we copied that in and that loads up right here on your mission briefing. All right, and you can bring up that page when you're in the jet by pressing left, alt, and bravo. Brings up the same page. So this is where all your uh, information for a mission is going to be written down so that you can copy it. All right, so you'll, you'll have your AWACS, you'll have um, any information that you need to know for the mission you're going to write it in here so that it's in a uh, written form so you can refer to at any stage during the sortie okay so that's where in the blue tasking it's going to pop in when you jump into an aircraft it's going to write up if you were flying a red four aircraft you'd have to put it in the red tasking so whatever coalition you're, you've chosen that's what it's going to display for your task the situation, I will uh, get the, got it written down somewhere else. I just got to find it and I'll uh, copy that in. So that's pretty much the audio to that mission start. Okay, the, the text to the, that audio clip. Coalition forces have been tasked with the protection of the southeastern flank. So the, the, the uh, text version of that audio file is what I'm going to put in to the situation. Okay. All right, so let's zoom out here just so you can read this a bit better. All right, so now we're going to go make our way through filling this mission out. 
So Novorisk is our base airfield. Okay, this is where we're gonna be operating out of for this uh, sortie. First thing we need to do, all right, when you're ready, check in via the F-10 radio and select which mission you'll be taking part in today. So remember, I'm gonna make three separate sorties or three separate missions for in the one mission file. So you're gonna have exposure to, you're gonna have a choice of three different types. You're gonna have CAS, we're gonna make a CAP, all right, so an air-to-air -air mission, a ground attack mission, and an anti-shipping mission, and then see how we're feeling. Uh, we might throw in a, a seed, a suppression of enemy air defenses, so doing a SAM strike as well. We might throw in four. We'll see how we go. Okay, so we need to make a radio item. I'm going to copy the name of that. CAS Mission Operation Avalanche Predator. Okay, so we're going to make a radio, F-10 radio command to uh, select. We're going to go into our triggers now. So I'm going to clone this mission start. I'm going to move it down one, and I'm going to change the name of this to CAS Mission Operation Avalanche Predator. I'm going to change the color make it brown okay so brown for the ground so that I, I can separate so now you can kind of see what i'm doing so everything that had to do with mission start goes in underneath mission start everything to do with the cast mission i'm going to put all my cast mission triggers in there and then i'll make another one of these for my uh my cap mission the air to air mission put all the triggers under there make another one for our anti-shipping mission and then that way you can kind of just look and it's all separated into its own separate triggers that are appropriate to each um, part of the mission that you're making. It just makes your life easier to know what triggers are where, what they do, and all that kind of stuff. Because the the more uh, situation awareness you've got on what is doing what and where it belongs, it makes your life as a mission maker a lot easier. So we're going to make a trigger now called F10 Radio, and we will put it as uh, Cas. Mission, all right, and now I'm going to make this with a asterisk number one, all right. So the first trigger that we made, it waits 30 seconds after mission start, and then the sound file goes for another 34 seconds. That's 30 plus 34, that's a minute and four seconds until this trigger's finished doing its thing. All right, so I want this radio option to kick in at 64 seconds. We're going to go time more, 64 seconds. The action is we're going to click on the new, we're going to scroll down, and we're going to go to radio item add for coalition. Actually, no, wait one. So we get back out of here. Just thinking in my head. So we're just going to go begin playing actor so it doesn't disappear. All right. <clears throat> so we've got three. I'm going to delete that. We'll run with three missions that we're going to make. So we're going to have a, a ground attack mission. We're going to have a air to air mission. And we're going to have a anti shipping mission. We can have three different uh, missions available. So we're going to have three different player slots for that mission. And you can choose which other aircraft, which aircraft you want for each of these. But for the sake of this, we're going to, for our ground attack, um, I'm going to make it the F-18. Okay, so the F-18 is going to be my aircraft that I'm going to use for the ground attack mission. Okay. So when you are adding a, a group or an aircraft, you're going to scroll down here till you get to the objectives. You're going to click on the little plane icon. Okay, add or modify airplane group. We're going to click on that. It's going to bring this bad boy up. The name. Get in the habit of naming the group especially to something that makes sense to you because you're going to use the, uh, the group name in the triggers. Okay, so we're going to call this... Um, Cass, Cass player, okay, Cass player, or 
We'll call it CAS client. All right, and I'll explain that in a second. CAS client is the group. Okay, so this is our, our CAS mission group. The aircraft is going to be an F-18. Okay. And now we're going to click on, let's go, go up here. We're going to click on that. So that has put a aircraft into the, the mission editor now. So we've got an F-18 is spawned in. And if you're wondering why my uh, icon is probably looking different to yours, you've just done that and it looks like a different icon. So in the mission options, I believe it is. No, where are you? Ah, oh, here we go. Okay, so in the icons, yours might look like an that, an F. Okay, so to change it, I prefer the icons Russian. So I can see which direction the aircraft's pointing. Okay, it puts an arrow in the direction that it's pointing as opposed to, uh, you know, it's a lot harder for me. It's personal preference. I prefer uh, the, Russian, the Russian symbol. Okay, so the icon, you've got NATO, which is default. Russian, that's the difference. So if you're looking at people's mission editor and you're like, why doesn't mine look like that? That's how you change it. That's our little aircraft. Um, the show models, so down the bottom here, okay, you've got the little tank icon. If you click on that and you zoom in enough, it actually shows the, the model. If you don't have that checked, it'll just show you the symbol. So you can zoom right in and you can, you know, when you're putting static units down in particular, you can make sure it's looking exactly in the right spot that you would like it as well. So that is how you get that. And we'll just come back out here. So we're going to click on this little guy. All right, he's, the group name is called CAS Client. And we're going to come down. We've chosen a F-18. We're going to assign a CAS role to it. And we're going to choose the skill. So the skill, this is in relation to the AI. Okay, so the computer-controlled aircraft. You've got rookie, trained, veteran, ace, and random. So obviously rookie is the easiest version. Ace is the most skilled version. Random will pick one of those four. Okay. So that is if you're putting an AI flight in, which we'll do in a second. For you making a mission, so if you want to use this aircraft to fly yourself in the mission, you need to either put it on player or client. Client is for multiplayer. So if you want to do a multiplayer mission, make sure you select client for every aircraft that you would like to be available for you and your friends to fly. To fly. If you're just doing a single player mission, you just select player. But client and player are the exact same thing. So I'm going to use client just so then I've got the option of making this a multiplayer mission uh, at some stage. I don't have to go in and change it later. Okay, so client is our skill. So that means this is a flyable aircraft for me. Uh, the radio frequency, we're going to make this uh, 250. Okay, and the reason for that is because our AWACS is on station and on radio frequency 250. So our radio is going to be default tuned into AWACS straight away. Okay. Next part, um, you can change the, the tail number if you want to whatever tail name you want, uh, tail number. Call sign, click on it. It's going to give you a whole heap of different options. We're going to choose Sting because it's a Hornet. And then you can have, uh, so when you hear, if you use the radio, you will, your aircraft will refer to itself in the uh, the in-game radio comms as sting one one all right um next we're going to come down so we're in our waypoint tab here and at the moment our aircraft here is at 6562 feet and it is doing 350 knots or 0.537 mac okay so if i was to load in the mission right now and click on that aircraft slot I would spawn in in the air at 6,562 feet, doing 350 knots into the mission flying. I want this to be a cold start. So when I spawn in, the aircraft's on the ground, engines are turned off, I'm going to start up from scratch. So I'm going to go to my type, waypoint type, click on that, and we're going to select takeoff from ramp. Okay, so takeoff from ramp is going to assign our aircraft to a parking number at the airfield. So if you scroll along here, you can see there's all these numbers here. So this is all the available parking spots at Novarisk Airfield. So we can fit 
up to 38 aircraft on this airfield. They've got parking spots for 38 of them. To choose which spot you want, so if I, for example, wanted my uh, F-18 to start up at car park or spot number 38, down here, you've got next to takeoff and ramp, you've got park, PRK. Click on that, choose the spot you want, and it will move your aircraft to the applicable number. So we want to go back to number nine. That's us. Okay, we're going to spawn in right there. Done, done. Other options you've got, so your turning point and flyover point, they are in air spawn, so you'll start, the aircraft will actually be in the air. Takeoff from runway will spawn you in at the end of the runway. Engines already started, and all you got to do is just put your throttles in and you'll take off. Okay, you'll start on the actual runway, ready to go. Takeoff from parking hot. When you spawn into the jet, your aircraft will be already engine started, all systems online, um, ready to taxi out. And then you've got landing, um, is more of a an AI waypoint. So if you want to make the AI land, you can put a waypoint in and tell them to land. Uh, and then take off from ground, take off from ground hot is more for helicopters if you want to take them off, take off from the uh, the grass, for example, instead of actually a car park or a, a car park, a aircraft spot on an airfield. Take off from ground, that'll be a cold start, and then take off from ground hot, you'd spawn in, the helicopter would be on the ground. Already engine started. Okay, so we're gonna leave it at take off from ramp. And you can have up to four aircraft per group. Okay, per aircraft group. So you can have a flight of four. So if you were going to make this a multiplayer mission and you wanted to have four of your buddies come along, you just go on the group here, unit one of one. You're going to click on the arrow next to the of, click it. You're going to put two, three, and four. You can see it spawned in four. So now on the mission, I've got four F-18 Hornet spots that myself and three other people if I was to host a multiplayer mission with this mission we're making, I could have four people play with uh, all of us flying Hornets. Okay, so we're just going to leave it as one. Okay, one Hornet for us. And that'll do for now. So we're going to come across now to our payload. I'm going to click on this. And it's going to bring up this little screen here. So this is your aircraft loadout screen. You can choose the skin. Right, so there's custom skins. You can just use your uh, up and down arrow to cycle through. If you've got any custom skins, so I'll put on my, where are we? This one, that's my, uh, my own personal skin that I got made for myself, PFA 45. But you've got all the custom skins there. Now in your taskings, so CAS, every CAS loadout that you make, Okay, is going to be in the uh, in the options here because I'm going to make a pre-made loadout. I'm going to go to task nothing, and it's going to show me. So this because it's a um, a player-controlled aircraft. The task doesn't really matter what you choose because you're flying the jet. If you're making an AI aircraft, the task matters. Okay, so when it's a client. It doesn't matter if you pick cap, cast, or anything. It doesn't matter. So we're going to select nothing. And the reason I selected nothing is because it's going to give me every single loadout that the Hornet has got loaded in. So the, if I go back to cap here, we'll go cast. So we've got AIM-9, M2, CBU-99, number four, or four of them, and then fuel tanks times two. If we click on that, you can see that is the loadout. You can click on and it will show you the different loadouts. So we use that one there, AIM-9M, CBU-99 times four. So that's in the CAS tasking. If I go to nothing, I can scroll down and I can still have the same loadout. There it is there, but it just shows me every single loadout that I want, okay? Now all these ones, all the bunker buster, cap, cap seed, all this stuff, these are custom ones that I have uh, made myself. Okay, so you can make your own loadouts just to speed up time when you uh, spawn into the mission. So we're going to go with, uh, so this is a CAS flight. We're going to go with a uh, preset that I've already chosen before. So we're going to rock with this. We've got uh, four CBU-32s. 
GBU 12, sorry, what the fuck, GBU 32, GBU 12s, okay, the laser guided bombs, and then our GBU 38s, which is our JDAM. So we've got four JDAMs and four laser guided bombs and a uh, targeting pod and a fuel tank. Okay, so that's the loadout we're going to select. But again, you can just leave it empty and then leave it up to yourself. You can open up the loadout screen and select your own, uh, your own loadout yourself. All right, but for this one, we're just going to go with uh, that one there. Okay. Lovely. Uh, you've also got internal fuel. Uh, your main thing to look for here is you want to make sure you don't exceed your maximum aircraft takeoff weight. So if this is like, say, 104%, mainly on the, uh, the A-10 is the one you're going to run into issues because the A-10 can actually carry more ordnance than it can actually take off with. So if that does happen, all right, so just say you had 104%, you need to adjust and you don't want to change your uh, weapon loadout. You need to adjust your fuel level to drop your max total aircraft weight down. And obviously, if you're dropping fuel, then you are going to potentially have to go and do an aerial refuel once you get airborne to get your fuel back up. Otherwise, you're going to run out of fuel before you make it to the sortie. Okay, so just be aware. Make sure that your uh, maximum aircraft weight hasn't ex exceeded your maximum takeoff weight in the mission ender. You can also set up your chaff and flare, how much gun ammunition and the ammunition type if you want to change that. I'll just leave that all, all default. And that is pretty much it that we're going to muck around with on us. Okay, and we'll deal with the other stuff later on. <clears throat> okay, so that's our aircraft called CAS Client. Now we're going to click on here. We're going to put another one in. We're going to call this one CAP Client. Put him there. We're going to change that to Client. Take off from Ramp. We'll change the call sign to Hornet. Okay, 250. So all I'm doing is just putting my three uh, mission type aircraft in, and I'll show you why in a second. All right, and then uh, we also skin. Again, if you want to muck around with that, you can. I'm just going to leave those as default because this is all going to be player aircraft. You can customize that in the mission when you actually load in. One more, and we're going to call this anti ship client all right click on that there you go client nothing uh, these guys can be called squid why not 250 take off from ramp done anti-ship okay there we go so we've got our cast client our cap client and our anti-ship client now when you put an aircraft in it's going to default, it'll have your waypoint add button. This will be selected. So I guarantee you're going to have this happen to you. It's going to happen. You'll put an aircraft in and then you go, all right, I want to click on this guy. You click on it and then it puts a waypoint in. Okay, because you're still on the add. So um, you can delete the waypoint by just pressing not delete. <laughs> if you press delete, you delete the actual whole uh, aircraft. So we're going to do that again. Anti-ship. Client, click it, F18, it's going to be client, we're going to put nothing for the role, uh, it's going to be called squid, frequency 250, and take off from ramp, done. Okay, so it is by default on add there, so again, I wanted to, want to click on that guy, it didn't do it, so you come over and you press delete, and then just make sure you select edit. Once you've got an edit selected, you can click on other stuff on the map and it won't put a waypoint down. So just be aware that that may catch you out. All right. So back to where we were. Okay. Radio CAS mission. So time more than 64 seconds. We're going to say now we want it to give us a radio item add. Uh, radio item add for group. Okay. The group is going to be um, CAS client. Okay. Radio item add CAS client. The name is going to be, again, that should hopefully still be the same thing. Okay. So the name is CAS mission operation avalanche predator. 
Okay, the flag is going to be flag number one, value number one. So let's run through what, the, what we just did there. So we are wanting to put a trigger in. The trigger conditions is after 64 seconds, it's going to make an F10 radio option available called CAS Mission Operation Avalanche Predator. And it's only going to be available or seen by the group CAS client. Okay, and it's going to fire flag one, value one. Okay, so we're going to check that right now. So we're going to click here, we're going to save it. We're going to press apply mission. Press start. All right, so we're going to select our CAS. CAS client is what we want. Group name, CAS client. Press OK. And we're going to press fly. Turn our battery on so we can see. Now, at the moment, if I bring up the uh, comms menu, there is no F10 option at all. So we've got F1, F2, F3, F5, F8. So at 64 seconds, so at 7 minutes, 21 and 04, it's going to give us an option. C that need to be accomplished in order to restore okay, order to 56, the civilian populace. 57, 58, there's our When you are ready, check in via radio. the F10 radio and select which mission you will be taking part in today. Okay, and now if I go, we've got an our comms menu. There's now an F10 other. We click on that. And it's going to give us the option there. So cast mission, operation, Avalanche Predator. So it's given us our uh, radio option to click on. Okay, nothing will happen if we click on it. All right, it'll stay there, won't disappear, but we've got an option there. So now we're going to go to choose slot. And if I choose another aircraft type, so that was cast client for the group. If I choose cap client, spawn in. All right, and I go back to the F10. Oh, sorry, the, uh, the comms menu. Because it's not the, the CAS client, there's no F10 option because it's a different group. It doesn't have access to that radio command. Okay, so that is the difference. And if, again, if I just go back to choose slot to the CAS client group name, we're going to go OK, spawn back in, and it will have the F10 other. There we go. So that radio item is only for the group CAS client. Hopefully that made sense. Okay. Radio item add CAS client. Next part, we want to have it so when we click on that button, it does something. Okay. So now we're going to go new. We're going to go, this is going to be called CAS mission briefing okay now the conditions of this trigger firing so the condition now we're going to use a flag equals trigger or flag equals condition so flag one equals value one so remember in the uh, f10 radio trigger we just put in before when we click on that button so we press the cast mission operation avalanche predator it's going to fire flag number one, value number one. That's going to activate that flag and that value. Our next trigger is looking for flag one, value one. Okay, so when we click on that radio item, it's going to, this trigger that we're making right now is looking for flag one, value one is on. It's been activated. The conditions of the uh trigger being met now the actions what we want the trigger to do we're going to come down and we're going to say sound to group okay so we want this sound only to play to the cast group okay the cast client group so the group is going to be called cast client so if you're playing a multiplayer mission if um, once you select your mission type okay this is only going to play an audio file to the cast group. The cap group won't hear it. The anti-ship group won't hear it. They'll hear their own one 
Okay, and we'll pr we'll test all this out. So the the uh, mission, I'm going to go to CAS and CAS mission briefing audio. All right, and it's going to run for a minute and thirty seconds. Sounds Intelligence like reports from NATO surveillance drones have uncovered an enemy position on the coastline near the town of Two Apps. Okay, and that audio is just that. Intelligence reports from NATO surveillance drones have uncovered an enemy enemy position on the coastline near the town of Two Apps. It's exactly it's just reading that out in an audio version, which again is giving you more immersion into the mission, making it feel more realistic and authentic because you're actually getting a mission briefing uh, once you've selected the the uh, the mission in the F10 options. Okay, sounder group, task client, mission briefing. We're going to put a delay on that, so we want to have it wait five seconds. So five seconds. After flag one one is fired, it will start playing this audio. Okay. Mission briefing is loaded in and it's gonna read all of that stuff out for us. We also want to remove our uh, radio option. Okay, so radio item add, we're gonna copy this again. Control C. I'm going to come down here. And we're going to go new action. We're going to scroll down and we're going to say radio item remove for group. And the group is CAS client. And we're going to copy the name of okay, the exact text that you wrote for the, uh, the name of the radio item add. You're going to copy the exact text and put it into the radio item remove the group. All right. So what is going to happen is when 64 seconds after mission start, we're going to have the option to select cast mission operation avalanche predator. When we click on that radio option, it is then going to fire flag 11. Our next trigger is looking for flag 11 and it's going to play the or it's going to make the following happen. So it's going to play our mission briefing audio five seconds after we've pressed the button in the uh, radio options and it's also going to remove the radio option so it's going to get rid of it all right so let's go ahead and check that now let's save it we're going to jump in we're going to press start and we're going to select our cast client okay because this is the group we want Okay, and we jump in, press fly, turn our battery on so we've got some uh, power, speed up time, left control Zulu, at 30 seconds, it's going to play our mission start Coalition audio, forces have been tasked with the speed up time, Order to the at 58 seconds, course. it'll play our, or pop up our text, when you are ready, check in via the F10 radio, and select which mission you will be taking, it's been a minute today. and four seconds now, so now we're going to go, we've got our option, F10 other. Okay, so now when we click on the other, so we can either click on it or press F1, doesn't matter. When we click on it, so five seconds after we click, so wait for it to get to 20, 19, 20, click on it at 25, it should start playing our mission audio. Intelligence reports from yeah. NATO surveillance drones have uncovered an enemy position on While the coastline near the town. You can see of also it has removed the F10 option now, which is gone. So we've clicked on the button, we don't need it anymore. It appears that the enemy force is currently being. Okay, so that worked. All right, so that trigger, both of those triggers have worked. So we're going to go green and green. Both of them works we've got our mission briefing and our sorry our radio item select the mission and the mission briefing audio for the group only as client All right <clears throat> okay that is first part done now we're going to put ourselves into filling out this so we're going to put in our our actual targets, all right, our, our objectives, what we're trying to blow up, our, our mission objectives. 
So intelligence reports from NATO surveillance drones have uncovered an enemy position on the coastline near the town of Chuaps. It appears the enemy force is currently being resupplied by a convoy of logistics vehicles with a small armoured escort element. Uh, there's a surface air threat of man pads and AAA, and our primary objective is to destroy the supply convoy to prevent further reinforcement of frontline troops. Any other military assets are secondary targets. So we're going to find the town of Chwaps. We're going to put our ground units in. So here is our next little cool thing. So down the bottom here, you've got pan slash select. You've got map, all right, which puts this crazy looking like a proper map looking thing, really hard to read. You've also got satellite and you've got alternate. So we we're in alternate before. We're going to zoom in. We're going to click satellite. And satellite is going to show you what it actually looks like on the ground a little bit easier than the orange. So in the mission area on alternate, anything orange is considered a uh, city or a town. If it's green, it's um, obviously land. And if it's blue, it's ocean or water. All right, so this orange stuff is a town. So if we click on satellite, you can see town is there, yes, but there's also patches of grass. You can see trees and things. So it just makes it a little bit easier when you're putting, placing your units down. So what we're going to do now, we're going to come over to the left side. We're going to click on the little tank icon, and it's called ground units. Click on that, and it's going to bring up the same kind of thing that we did for the aircraft placement. And we're going to call, we're going to select the coalition now. We're going to make it Russian for Red 4. Okay. The unit, the group name. Okay. And again, make sure you call your group's names that make sense because you're going to use them in the trigger. So we're going to call this Chuaps Convoy. All right. The category, we're going to select unarmed. And we're going to choose a skill level of random. Okay, so it's just gonna be a random skill level and we're just gonna click on the map, put it down. All right, so now our type, we've got all these different types of units here. So what do they look like? How can you tell what you're looking at? You're gonna to go to the ammo tab. So you've got your waypoint tab, you're gonna to go to the ammo tab, click on that, and then it's gonna give you a 3D view of what the unit looks like. So that's some uh, some high definition shitty bus graphics right there. We don't want that. That looks terrible. So we're going to click on the type and I'm just going to use the arrow keys. I'm going to scroll down until I find something that resembles a convoy. All right? That is also some high definition truck goodness right there. We don't want that. That looks a lot better. So we will put um we use that. It's got a little do with an AK in the in the the truck window there. That's cool. And then we're going to use these two. So we're going to select truck gas sixty six, and we've got him there. So that's number one. So we're going to add in. All right, two, three, four of those. Number five. We're going to change from this one. Uh, that guy. Okay, so now number five, six, seven, and eight are done. So we've got four of each different type. So you can see there, if we zoom in, we've got four, one, two, three, four with the covers on top, and then one, two, three, four without the, uh, the vehicle cover. Okay, now when you're using ground units, the number one is the master unit all right so i can move all of these units independent of each other put them wherever i want okay but as soon as i move the number one it moves all of them as a template so keep that in mind so you want to make sure number one is in the spot where you're not going to move it okay so make sure your first your number one unit with the number one next to it put that in the position you want it and then move everything else in relation to it because if you go through and you're like um say let's put him somewhere where you wouldn't have him all right and you move all these units here and you're like cool they all look good and then oh this guy he's going to spawn in on top of a building so i'm going to move him and then you move all the other units right and then you're going to move all those ones back so the first the one with the number one on it place that exactly where you want it to be so you're not going to touch it and then move all the other units around okay 
All right, so we're going to assign, because this guy, these guys are a convoy, we're going to assign these guys to the road. We want them to be on the road. All right, so you can come down in your waypoint. You've got pipe. You've got off-road, on-road, line of breast, cone, V, diamond, echelon, left, echelon, right, and custom. So this is their formation, essentially. So we want them to be on-road. I'm going to click that, and boom, they snap onto the road. Okay, and let's move them. So click on these guys, we'll put them here. And I want to give them a waypoint to go that way. Okay, there we go. And we'll move. Oh, you bastard. Come on. Okay, so I just put a waypoint down so that they are all pointing in the right direction. Now I'm going to grab this guy and move him to where I want him to be, which will be right there. God damn you, bastards. All right, so now they're all straight. Delete the waypoint. So they're all pointing. looks like they're on the road because before they were like kind of all on different directions pointing. So now it looks like there's a, a logistics convoy is stationary on the road there. All right, so we've got our, our convoy all done. We've got our group of eight. And the group is called Chuaps Convoy. All right, so that is group one. Now we're going to put in some. We're going to call this Chuaps um, Armor. We're going to select Armor as our group. We'll put one in. And again, we're going to do the same thing here. Click on the type. I'm just going to use my down arrow. I'm going to find some armor types. It had an armored escort. We said in the mission. Okay, and you can make this as hard or as easy as you want. We're just going to go with, um, let's go, what do we want? We don't want a tank. Tank, nah, nah, nah. We'll go with that thing, okay? Infantry fighting vehicle, BTR 82A. That looks pretty cool. We'll run with that one. All right. So again, we're going to have, let's make four of these guys. So I'm going to click that four times, the plus. One, two, three, four. And I want to move my number one to where um, I want it to be. So he is there and he's facing that way. I'm going to drag this guy over here. And then we've got this little um, arrow icon here. This is relation to which way the unit's facing. You can see as I move it around, the actual unit here is spinning on the spot. So I want him facing out the other way. I'm going to drag this guy down over here. He can face out that way, and I'll drag that guy over here, and he can face out that way. So it looks like they're kind of uh, positioned to defend the convoy. Okay, and that group is called Chuaps Armor. It's set to random skill. Happy days. Now we're going to add in another group. Okay, we'll call them Chuaps um, AAA, because remember we said there was a... The surface to air threat, the unverified sightings of man pads and AAA in the area. So we're going to have this group. We're going to select air defense, and we'll just click one there. Same deal. What does it look like? You can scroll through. So we're going to go down to, um, we'll go all the way down to this. Where are you? This one here, ZSU 57-2. Okay, this tank. Tank looking thing. You get hit by one of these rounds, your aircraft is in trouble. Okay? That's what we're going to run with, this bad boy. Bad, bad, bad bit of kit. So we've got one. We're going to make two of him. On the third one, we're going to change this to a man pad. Okay, so we've got a man pad. Igla, what it looks like, it's a little dude with a uh, man portable air defense. Okay, is what uh, man pad stands for. Man portable air defense system. So he's got a little stinger missile. He's going to shoot an infrared missile at you if you get in his range. Okay. We close that and we're going to make two of them. Okay. So we've got two of our uh, ZSU 57s and two man pads. So I want unit number one. I'm going to move him to where I want him to be. So man pad, he's going to be a sneaky guy. We're going to hide him in the trees. So there's some trees there. He's there. Other man pad, we'll put in the tree line on over here. All right, make it a little bit harder, a bit sneakier. Then we'll put our AAA, 
put one kind of over here facing out and we'll put the other guy over here facing out. All right, so there we go. We've got our ground units all put in. Okay, so we've got our convoy in the middle and then we've got our armored escort and we've got our air defense. Okay, three different groups in there. We're also going to put in some static units, right? Because we said that we were, uh, these guys are resupplying a enemy position. All right, so we're going to put in some sat static ground units just to make it look like there's a little base that they're resupplying. So we're going to come over. So we'll go back to satellite view here. We're going to come to the little bridge looking thing, the icon. We're going to add or modify a static object. Click on that guy, bad, go bad boy. And we're going to select your country, red for Russian. I'm going to come down, I'm going to go to structures. And again, you can scroll through all the different types of structures. So we're going to look for some stuff to put on the ground just to make it look like there is a bit of a... That'll do. So we've got this little guy, right? It's like a little storage place where the logistics are getting delivered to. So we'll put, boom, one of them down there. You can see... We zoom in close enough, you can see which way he's facing. And we're just going to move him. Should move him uh, kind of over close to the road here. It's like a little bit of a, just sweeten him up so it's nice and square to the road. Looks good. So we can copy this now. Uh, we're going to press left control C to copy. Move your mouse and then left control V to paste. We're going to put three of them in. Okay, so you can. Space these out as you see fit. All right, so we've got three of those. We're also going to select a new group or a new static. We'll pick, uh, we've got some tents. We'll put some tents down. So again, the tent, move it so that it is kind of in the right orientation. There we go. Left click him. Copy and then we'll paste a few tents in, and then you just click square them all up so they look nice. And again, guys, if you don't have the uh, the little outline, it's because you don't have this thing down the bottom here. Show models. If you don't have that selected, you can't actually see the actual what the model looks like on the map. Okay, so really good, helpful uh, thing to make sure your uh, your bombing places, all that kind of stuff, look the goods. Okay, and it works in um, any of the map views. Okay, so we've got five tents there, and we will put in one more. We'll click on that again, and we're going to scroll down to uh, where we got outpost. Okay, this little guy here, a little outpost here, put that in. We could put even a road outpost. We'll put one of them in. Okay. So again, we're going to move him. Good. And now we'll just move the actual unit so that it's on the road there. Done. So we got a little uh, outpost there. You can see what it looks like. It's got a little uh, little gate. A couple of drums there and an outpost. We've put it so that it's on the road. Okay, so it looks nice. Beautiful. Done. So that's our little emplacement. Okay, we've got our, our target. So we're up here in Novo. Our target is down here in Traps. So that is our ground units placed. Okay, so we've put in the, the objective. No, there's a convoy of approximately 10 vehicles, um, but be prepared for more, blah, 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 support. So now we're going to fill in our, um, our AI support for the mission. So we're going to make a two ship of A-10 Warthogs that are AI controlled, available for us if we want to request help. We can uh, make it so that some A-10s come and help us. And we're also going to have some AI uh, cap aircraft that are going to provide overhead cover in case enemy uh, enemy fighters decide to come and uh, ruin the day. 
and try and shoot you down. We have some cap cover and we're also going to put an AWACS in so you can hear if uh, there's enemy, enemy aircraft coming your way. Right, so we're going to do that now. So we'll scroll back in. And we're going to put down our flight of aircraft. So we're going to go back to USA. We're going to call this one CAS um, A10 support. Okay, CAS A10 support. We're going to click on that. We're going to change these guys to an A10C. We're going to select their role is CAS. Okay, so this is where the task actually really matters when you're using AI. So that we want these guys to do a close air support mission. So we're going to choose them as a tasking of close air support. The skill, we're going to put these guys on random. All right, and now we can set up some stuff for the AI. So radio enabled, and we're going to tune them into 250. So these guys are going to talk when they engage targets and stuff on 250, which is the AWACS frequency. So you, if you're tuned into AWACS, you'll hear these guys talking, saying they're engaging targets target destroyed, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, we're going to choose their call sign. We'll call these because they're a A-10 flight. They can be hog. They're hog one, one, and we'll make hog one, two in a second. Okay. So waypoint, we want to sign these guys to the airfield. Okay. So take off from ramp. They're in parking spot 16, which is good. We're going to select their loadout. Okay. So remember the A-10 AI are going to fly whatever loadout you give them. So we're going to come down here and we will select. Do you have any cool ones here? Not really. Okay. So we'll just go with our own custom one. So we'll select this. And then in your mission payload, you can tweak this to suit. So this one has got currently AGM-65 Delta, and we'll change this to AGM-65 Deltas as well. Okay, so your Delta is your infrared IR Mavericks. So they're gonna have six of them, and then on the other stations, let's give them, On station four, they can have some of those. Okay, and we'll give them the same there. So laser guided uh, rockets, anti tank rockets. They got fourteen anti tank rockets, and we'll just give them a GBU GBU twelve and a GBU. 38. All right, so that's their loadout. They've got six Mavericks, uh, 14 laser guided rockets, a GBU 12, and a GBU 38. Okay, they got also have their um, uh, targeting pod, the lightning pod. They got two AIM 9s to defend themselves, and they've also got the jammer pod on board. Choose their skin. We've got the one with the teeth on it because it looks badass. All right, and that is our aircraft loadout that they're going to fly. So you can see now um, the aircraft loadout is at 98%. Okay, so they are super duper heavy. So again, this is where the ruler tool comes out. So we're going to zoom out here. I'm going to measure roughly how far it is. So we've got 53 nautical miles from the airfield to the target area. All right, the A-10s pretty much don't need a full tank of fuel for this. Right, they're not going to use um, eleven thousand pound of fuels to fly a hundred mile. Okay, it's not going to happen. So we're going to drop their fuel load down to fifty percent, and it's going to lighten them up. Okay, lighten them up in their aircraft weight, so they're going to be able to take off easier, and they'll still have enough fuel to fly their mission and come back home. Okay, so that is going to be my for the A ten. You can definitely overload it; and it won't take off. And then if it's an AI, you know they're going to struggle to take off and probably crash because AI aren't the smartest. Okay, so that is our A-10. He's set up. We're going to add another one. So we're going to have a two flight of A-10s. Okay, so now we go to the advanced waypoint action. So we're still on the waypoint tab here, and we've got all these options here. So advanced waypoint, we've got number one, CAS, uh, reaction to threat, 
radar formation, restrict jettison, radio usage, no report waypoint, and EPLRS. So running through this, the CAS, this is the uh, the role. Okay, so they're, they're going to be performing a combat air support, or close air support, sorry, close air support role. So they're going to be attacking ground targets. Reaction to threat. Okay, if you go to the edit button, you can select all this stuff as default so that you can choose they don't react at all. So if something shoots at them, they'll just pretend like nothing is happening and they'll just fly and do their mission. Passive defense, evade fire, uh, evasive vertical maneuver, allow abort mission, horizontal AAA. So just leave that on evade fire. Radar usage, the A-10 doesn't have a radar, okay? So that one doesn't really apply. Formation, so this is the formation they're going to fly when they're flying between waypoints. So you can set them to line abreast, trail, wedge, echelon right, echelon left, finger four, spread four, all of those. So we're just going to make these guys go line abreast. You can choose if they're a close, open, or group close. I'm going to put them on open. Um, restrict jettison. Okay, make sure this one is turned on. Right. If this is turned off, as soon as the first missile or something gets shot at the A-10, it's going to emergency jettison off every single store that it has, and then it's pretty much mission game over. Okay, They're just going to turn around because they've got no bombs left. They can't attack anything. They'll fly home. Okay, So make sure you turn off. Make sure restrict jettison is on, sorry, which is by default it is on. So if you turn that off, it's going to ruin your, your mission. Just confirm that it's on. Radio usage when in contact. Okay, so this is if you want them to talk. So at the moment, they're turned off. So we're going to make it so that when they engage any vehicles. Okay, and AAA and short-range SAMs. All right. So we're telling it so that on 250 frequency, when they start engaging any armored vehicles, any armored uh, units, tanks, infantry fighting vehicles, or APCs, artillery, unarmed, or AAA, or short-range SAMs, they're going to actually say on the radio frequency, uh, it'll be like HOG-1-1 engaging, um, you know, AAA ZSU-52 Type 2. Right? They'll actually speak it. If you don't want them to actually speak, just leave it, um, everything unchecked. But we want them to actually talk. Um, then waypoints, we don't really care. We don't want them to report saying that they've hit a waypoint. Not really important to us. And then your EPLRS, that is um, mainly when you're using uh, J Hammix. Right, J Hammix, it'll show the units in the air. So it'll give you, um, it'll make them seeable in your J Hammix, essentially. Okay. Sweet. So we've got our A10s are sort up, set up now. We're going to give them some waypoints. Okay, so we are going to go add. Make sure on add waypoint. We're going to go waypoint, boom, number one. So at waypoint one, we want these guys to be at, uh, let's make them we'll go 16,000 feet. So remember the cloud layer is at uh, pretty much 18,000 feet. So 16,000 feet. And we'll make them go on as fast as they can. So we'll just type in 4,500 knots, left click it, and it's going to default to the fastest speed that the A10 can do, which is 389 knots. They're not even going to make that speed. Okay, but we, we're telling them be flat out as fast as you possibly can. All right, so they're going to take off and they're going to climb up to Angel 16 and be at top speed by waypoint one. We're then going to put another waypoint in down here. Okay, waypoint two, same deal. And we're going to put another waypoint in, waypoint three, back over here. And we're going to make this our landing waypoint. So we're going to change the waypoint type to landing. And that will snap to the airfield and telling them to go land. So now we are going to assign an orbit now. So we're going to sweeten this up. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to tell the A-10s, they're going to take off, they're going to fly to waypoint one. Once they hit waypoint one, we want them to do an orbit between waypoint one and waypoint two. They're going to fly around in a left-hand orbit, and they're going to be attacking any ground units that they see, okay, on the ground. As soon as all the ground units are done, all right, all the ground units are destroyed, they will either continue flying around until they run out of fuel, they'll RTB, and they'll land. Okay, but while there's ground units on, we want them to stay in the area and keep shooting stuff until 
they've killed everything. So we're going to go to waypoint one, which we've selected. Okay, it's highlighted, it's yellow. And we're going to go to advanced waypoint actions. We're going to add a perform task. Okay, so you click on add, perform task, start on route task, perform command, set option. We want perform task and we're going to select orbit. Okay, so now we're going to select racetrack pattern. You've got circle or racetrack. We're going to go racetrack. The speed, we're going to match up with our previous speed, so 389 and altitude is 16,000 feet. Okay, done. So what we've done is we've told the A10s they're gonna take off. Once they hit waypoint one, they're gonna go into a racetrack pattern orbit. So they're gonna fly around in a left-hand pattern between waypoint number one and waypoint number two. Okay, so they'll fly around between those two waypoints. And if there's any ground targets they see, they'll engage them because they're on CAS or their, uh, their aircraft tasking CAS, all right? And then once they have killed everything or they run out of fuel or ammunition, they're going to RTB back to base. They're going to go home and land. All right, so that is them done. Awesome. Now let's get fancy. So as it stands right now, we started the mission up, loaded it in. These A-10s, as soon as we press fly and press jump in our aircraft and press play, these guys are going to instantly be in the game they'll start themselves up they'll taxi out onto the airfield and they'll take off and they'll fly down and do exactly what we told them okay they're going to go down there and they're going to go kill everything before you even get in the air okay we don't want that to happen we want these guys to wait until we call them on the radio okay so we are going to do that right now so on your group tab make sure you've got the a10 selected we're going to go to uncontrolled I'm going to click that checkbox. Okay. You're also down on your four tabs here. You're going to click on this little uh, symbol here with the five dots. I'm going to click on that. Triggered actions. Okay. We're going to add a triggered action. And it's going to be called, uh, I think it's no, perform command. There we go. You're going to select the perform command. You're going to scroll down and you're going to press start okay so we're putting a triggered action of start in that's all you got to do okay start that's it all right so you need uncontrolled checked and you need start in the triggered actions now we're going to make a radio item or a radio command to call these guys up okay so we're going to go into the triggers and a new trigger, and we're going to call this um, CAS. Oh, hang on. So we want F10 radio CAS support, and it's going to be flag because it's a radio item. It's going to be a flag. It's going to fire a flag. So we want flag number two because we use flag number one in the um, the CAS mission. Okay, so flag number two. The Conditions, we'll come to in a second, but now we're going to go scroll down. We're going to go radio item add for group. The group is our CAS uh, client. Okay, so we want the, the CAS client to have the option to call up the support for themselves. And the radio item, let's call it, um, uh, we'll go requesting uh, a 10 Charlie support flag two value one. Okay, done. Next one, new trigger. We're gonna call this um, CAS support startup. Okay, the conditions for this one are going to be flag equals flag two, value one, new. We're going to say AI task set. Okay, AI task set. And the task is what we put in to that uh, triggered actions tab on the A10. So CAS A10 support start. So that there, remember, was on the triggered actions tab, that start thing. So if we don't have that in there, 
it doesn't give us the option to tell the ATMs to start up, All right? We're also gonna put in a sound to coalition, uh, sorry, sound to group. Uh, sound to group. Actually, we'll go, um, we'll go sound to coalition because we want all, so just say um, you're doing a CAS mission and then you've got your cap fighters, um, someone's flying cap for you. We want the, the cap guys to know that, hey, two A-10s have taken off or are taking off as well. Um, so it gives a situational awareness for everyone. So we're going to go sound to coalition for this one. So everyone in a blue aircraft will hear this radio or this sound bite. So the radio, the coalition is going to be blue. We're going to open up and we're going to go play this file. A two ship of A-10 Warthogs are available to assist in the destruction of the supply convoy if required. No, we're not going to play that. They can be requested via the F-10 radio Wrong menu. One. Um, where are we? This one, Warthog Startup. Two ship of A-10 Warthogs is starting up at Navarasi Airfield and will be on station in approximately 15 minutes. Done. Okay. So we're going to click on that and we'll set it to a delay of five seconds. We're also going to make a uh, message to coalition blue and we're going to copy we're not we're going to copy we'll just write this one in old-fashioned style so pretty much what the text said a two ship of a 10 charlie warthogs are starting up at Novo, God, how do you spell this here? Airfield. Novo, R O double S Y Y S K. Pick the worst airfield to spell. Starting up at Novo Ross Airfield. God, it's typing. Two ship of A-10 Charlie Warthogs are starting up at No Risk Airfield. Um, expected time on station is 15 Expected time. No. They will be on station in approximately 15 minutes. That's spelled correctly, hopefully. All right. And we're going to have that display for 10 seconds, and it'll be on a delay of uh, five seconds as well. We're also going to put in a radio item remove for group. Radio item remove for group. The group is the cast client and the radio name. Let's quickly just that we're going to copy this requesting a10 charlie support we're going to copy the name of the radio item i'm going to put it in here Boom. requesting a10 c support okay so now the radio f10 item right so we're going to again um time more than 64 seconds it's going to add the item ready item add group boom and then we will go for 64 seconds let's make this one our condition here time more make it let's make it like 75 seconds okay so 
Again, recapping, just piss that off so it's less distracting for you guys, for our mission here. So when we first spawn in, the, the mission, 30 seconds after the mission starts, going to play our mission briefing to all of the coalition. It's going to give you the option, select your mission. Okay, you're going to go in, you're going to select cast mission, operation, avalanche predator. Okay, so that's going to be at 64 seconds. Once we've selected that, it's going to play our audio for the, uh, the mission. And then we want this at 75 seconds. So 11 seconds after, let's um, put the radio item add. It's going to give us the radio item request A10C support. Okay, flag two, value one. Once flag two, value one has been met, it's going to tell our group CAS A10 support to start up. It's going to play the sound to coalition blue. Two ship of A10 Warthogs is starting up at Navarasi Airfield and will be on station in approximately 15 minutes. Done. Going to put this message up. A two ship of A10 C Warthogs are starting up at Navarasi. Over Ross I Y S K airfield, they will be on station approximately 15 minutes, and it's also going to remove the radio item because if we've requested it, we don't want it anymore. Okay, they've been started up, we don't need them, and we're going to check that out now. Okay, so let's go file save, press fly, and let's test this out. All right, so we're going to select CAS client, press OK. And press fly. Okay, so again, we're going to confirm there is no F10 option just yet. Turn our battery on so we get a timer. Speed time up at 30 seconds. It should fire our mission the audio. Southeastern flank which it of is. Airfield. At 58 seconds. Give us our audio text. When you're when ready, you ready, check in via the F10. F10 radio and select which mission you will be taking part in today. So then we're going to go in. Now we've got an F10 option. CAS mission operation avalanche predator. We're going to click on that. Five seconds later, it will play the audio. Intelligence reports from NATO surveillance drones have uncovered an enemy position on the coastline near the town of Two Apps, located in Grid Square EJ08. It appears that the enemy force that is up. currently being... Your primary objective so once he's finished talking by convoy if required they can be requested via the f10 radio menu additional coalition cap fighters based out of not speed up station and on radio frequency 250 megahertz done okay so he's finished his mission briefing we're going to f10 now we've got our radio item we just gave in Requesting A10C support. So at the moment, if we uh, close that, F2, you can see the A10s. All right, there's a pilot in there. For some reason, the A10s, even when you select uncontrolled, they spawn in with a pilot in the aircraft, but they're not started up. They're just sitting there waiting. Okay, they're loaded up, ready to go, but they're not actually doing it. They're waiting for us to select that radio command. Okay, so if we, again... F10, so we're going to select requesting A10 support. Um, let's go back in the cockpit, do that. F10, request A10 support. These guys should start starting up in a second, five seconds later. Two ship of A10 Warthogs is starting up at Navarasi Airfield and will be on station in approximately 15 minutes. There we go. Okay, and if we go back to external view they're starting up now okay a10s are starting up so they've done their trigger we requested them to start up or requested their support they're going to start up they're going to taxi out and they're going to fly all the way down to chew apps and do their mission so we're going to speed time up here Just to confirm that they actually start up taxi out and then start heading down towards two apps.
You can see them on the map. They're moving. Taking off. They are airborne. They can hook a lefty and head down towards two apps, which is down here. And then they'll start engaging ground targets. Again, we'll just speed time up a little bit more. So the cruise all the way down, and they're going to start shooting our ground units down at two apps. Come on. And then if we click on one, don't crash the mission editor. Oh god. Done our first uh Oop, no, we're good, we're good. Click on one. So they're at uh, 16,000 feet. They're flying as fast as they can. They're about to hit waypoint one. Almost froze there. All right, so they're going to hit waypoint one, and then they're going to start firing their Mavericks. So they have. Mavericks are being fired, and they're cruising in. They're going to take out targets. Boom, 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 boom. You can hear the uh, AAA shooting. They just got hit by a Maverick. All right, so the, the uh, A-10s are doing their job. Yeah, they're doing their mission. Done, done, and done. Okay, so they're going to do their thing. Awesome. Oh, so that is green for good. That is... We're in for good. So we've got our radio items all sorted out. A-10s are started. Now, the last bit we need to do is put in cap fighters and our AWACS. Okay, so we'll speed up through this stuff now. We've explained it. So we're going to, again, click on the aircraft. We're going to call this um, F-15C caps lock, F-15 Charlie. Cap support. Um, we're going to select cap or not. Let's select F15 Charlie. Um, they're going to be random. Come down here. We'll click right there. 15 cap support. Uh, they're going to be frequency 250. Pull sign. They can be Springfield flight. Um, Select their skin. Loop. And they can rock the eight AM rams. All right. The spam, the spam ram, the eagle spam ram. Done. Okay. Aircraft is uh, well within. Takeoff parameters for fuel and uh, aircraft weight. Done. Uh, we're going to assign those guys to take off from ramp. And same deal. We can have a look at our radio usage. So we want these guys to talk on comms when they're engaging any aircraft. All right. So any air, they're going to say. Um, so here you've got when they're going to engage, so air-to-air -air missile attack ranges, you've got random between max range and no escape, um, halfway, max range and no escape, launch by target threat estimate, and no escape zone launch. So you can uh, choose that. We're going to go uh, halfway, max range, and no escape range. Okay. Done. And let's add in a... Go to our waypoint. So we're going to do the same thing now. We're going to scroll down. We're going to go waypoint number one there. Let's make these guys be at 40,000 feet. Uh, we'll make them doing like 
0 0.9 Mac. Um, we're going to also add another waypoint here, waypoint 2, and we'll put waypoint 3 back over here, change that to landing, and we are good there. So now we're going to go back to waypoint number 1, and we do the exact same thing we did before, add, and we want perform task orbit racetrack at 521 knots, and match up that the same at 40,000 feet. Done. Okay, so we did pretty much the exact same thing we did with the A-10s. The F-15s are going to, when they, when they take off, they're going to fly to waypoint 1, they'll be at 40,000 feet, and they're going to orbit between waypoint 1 and 2, doing cap until they run out of fuel or ammunition, and then they'll fly back to Novo and land. Okay. Zoom back in. We're going to make this a, uh, we'll make it a three ship just to fill out the, uh, the flight line there. So three ship of F-15s. No, we'll move, move these guys back down. So let's make it a four ship because the audio actually is a four ship. So these guys can be down here. One, two, three, four. Four ship F-15s are down on this tarmac. Okay. Uh, we're going to make these guys uncontrolled as well. We're going to come into our triggered actions. We're going to add, perform command, start. Okay, done. Come into our triggers, and we're pretty much going to copy these. So I'm going to press clone, move this one down. Okay, I'm going to change it back to white because I haven't um, adjusted it. I'm going to call this F10 radio. Um, Cap support, and we'll change the flag to three. I'm going to leave the time more the same. Radio item add, uh, requesting F15 Charlie support, flag three. Okay, so I just cloned to save you redoing the trigger. You can clone it and just change the things that you need to. Okay, so um, I just cloned it and I changed the name. The F10 radio cap support, put a number three because we're going to use flag number three. Left the time more, so it's going to pop up the same time as the, the CAS um, radio option is there. And it's going to have a radio item add for group. The group is CAS client. It's going to be called requesting F15 Charlie support, flag number three, value number one. Now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to clone our CAS support startup, clone that, change it to white, and we're going to call it cap support startup flag instead of two we want flag three okay that down so remember flag number three is our cap support radio item so we want flag three one equals ai task set f15c cap support done they're going to start up sound to coalition we're going to change this to that one okay my audio file Message to coalition. We're going to change that. A four ship of F fifteen Eagles starting up at Nova Risk Airfield. They will be on station in approximately. I can't remember how long it actually said. Four ship of F fifteen Eagles is scrambling out of Navarasi Airfield and will be on station in approximately 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Okay, so we're going to change starting, just to match the audio there, uh, scrambling. Sounds a little bit more dramatic, doesn't it? Scrambling. Scrambling at Novorossiysk Airfield. They will be on station in approximately 10 minutes. Okay, it's delayed five seconds, and the removal of our radio item. So we're going to copy that, copy, and paste that in there. Boom. Okay, it's going to remove the F10 radio option once we've clicked on it. All right, so a little bit quicker on that one. So we will save it. We're also going to add in an AWACS real quick. 
and then we'll test all that and then that is this mission done this has been going for holy shit nearly two hours so i will put timestamps in this um and i'll put you know it's just going to be start to finish basic cast mission then we'll do the same thing for our cap and the same thing for our uh, anti-ship so let's quickly put in an AWACS now. So we're going to come again to the add or modify airplane group. Click on that. Call this AWACS. Okay, we'll just put a aircraft out here in the yonder. We're going to select E3A, which is our AWACS. Uh, they can be a random frequency for AWACS is 250. They can be call sign. Leave them as overlord. Um, okay, and they're going to be at 35,000 feet. Yep, doing 7.7 7 Mac. Okay. Um, so they are in. We're going to add a waypoint. So we're going to go waypoint one and then waypoint number two. And the B uh, landing. Okay, and the difference now, we're going to go back to waypoint one. We're going to go advanced waypoint action, add, perform task. Task will be orbit. And we're going to, instead of select racetrack, we're going to select circle. Okay, and they're going to circle around at 230 knots. All right, around a circle of waypoint one. Once they run out of fuel, they'll go and land at Novo. Okay. I didn't match up the speed because I don't mind if they go slow. All right slower they'll save fuel so all we're saying is when they spawn in they're going to be spawning in at 400 knots as soon as they hit waypoint one they'll slow down and they'll start their uh their orbit providing AWACS uh, radio coverage for our fighters all right so let's um get rid of that just move him there okay so he is all set up frequency 250 that's all we need to know Okay, if you want to change the skin, you got USAF or NATO. We'll go with NATO because we said coalition forces. Forces, that'll do. Done. All right, so he is. If you want AWACS straight away, they're going to be instantly in the mission at uh, thirty-five thousand feet, and they'll start doing their AWACS stuff straight away. So we're going to file, we'll press save, we're going to test all those triggers. And we'll finish up with the brief. And then that, that'll be doing us. So cast client is what we want to choose. Okay, press fly. Turn our battery on. All right, so we got AWACS is talking. Mission brief. Okay, so F10 other. Cast mission. Operation Avalanche Predator. We're going to click on that. Got rid of it. Now we've got requesting A10C support. Intelligence reports from NATO surveillance drones have uncovered an enemy position on the coastline near the town of Two Apps. Located in Grid Square EJ08. It appears that the enemy force is currently being resupplied by a convoy of logistics. Alright, so we'll speed up that. So he stopped talking. Alright, so now we're going to test our. We know the A10 works already. We're going to request caps. We're going to click on that. Confirm that it's removed it. Requesting F-15C support is gone. Four ship of F-15 Eagles is scrambling out of Navarasi airfield and will be on station in approximately 10 minutes. And if we go to our... There we go. F-15s are starting up. Doing their thing. All right, and our AWACS is in there. Cruising around, doing its thing, reporting for us. Okay, F-15s are taken off, and they will do their, their cap sortie.
Okay, so they're gonna taxi. Yeah, they'll taxi all the way up the other end. Take off. Doing their thing. There they go. Taxiing past us. Adds to the uh, the cool realism. If you're still on the uh, tarmac, you'll see the F-15s. Taxi up and start. Fly taxi past you. Just adds to the immersion, you know? So that is all good. Triggers have worked. So we're going to go ahead and make them green. Green and green. All right. Last one we're going to do is uh, tidy up the mission briefing and add in a mission complete trigger as well. And then that will do us. So we're going to come back to our cast mission in the briefing task. So our coordinates, we're going to put in the last known position of the enemy was, all right. Now you can be bang on with your coordinate if you want. I'm going to put it slightly offset. So a cool little thing in the mission editor, put your mouse wherever you want the coordinates to be, and you're going to press left control Yankee. It's going to bring up this little box here. So this is going to give you all your different coordinates for that exact spot where your mouse was. Okay, so you've got your metric, lat long standard, lat long precise, lat long decimal, MGRS grid. It tells you the altitude in meters and feet. So we're going to copy our coordinate. We're just going to go with lat long standard because we just want to give them a roughie, and then you're going to have to use your targeting pod to find them. All right, I'm going to paste that in, and the elevation is 391 feet. Boom, 391 feet. So we've given our player, okay, you guys have to put in your own waypoint. And again, if you didn't want to do that, if you didn't want to have a waypoint, um, and you just wanted that to be your own waypoint. Okay, so you'd go to your CAS client. Okay, so if you wanted to have an already predetermined waypoint, you don't want to punch waypoints in because you can't be asked, you just go click your aircraft slot. So the CAS client, you're going to go add, you're going to put a waypoint, boom. Now, if you're using this waypoint as a target waypoint, so you want to slew your targeting pod to look at this spot, Okay, you need to make sure you change the altitude, right? Because the altitude right now, if you spawned in and waypoint designated your targeting pod to waypoint one, the targeting pod would be looking at that exact coordinate, but at 6,562 feet in the air. Okay, so it's going to be looking above the target, not at the ground. So if you want to use a ground, uh, use the waypoint as a ground designation target to slew your targeting pod to a waypoint, just select altitude, press number one, just left click, and it's going to default it to the actual altitude of that spot on the ground. So at 259 feet, when you slew, if you uh, hit waypoint designate in the F-18 Hornet and you've got your targeting pod, it will slew to waypoint one and be looking at that exact spot on the ground. Okay, but I'm not going to do that because I prefer to actually make my guys do some work and put, some, uh, put their waypoints in manually. So we're going to delete that waypoint. But that's how you'd put in a target waypoint for yourself. Okay. All right. Um, next. Uh, that's that. We've got support done. Cat fighters are on station, ready to scramble. AWACS. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, now we're going to put a mission complete audio in okay so what we're going to do is we're going to come into the triggers we're going to go one more we're going to call this um mission complete the conditions for this trigger okay so remember our task was to take out these eight logistics vehicles okay that is our primary objective that we gave ourselves so once all eight of these aircraft are dead We've completed our primary task and we can go home. Anything else is extra bonus, but our mission we decided, our goal is to take out the eight uh, logistics vehicles. That's it. So we're going to come down and we're going to say group dead. And the group is Chuaps Convoy. Okay, and this is where naming your groups becomes important. 
the action. So when the group two apps convoy is dead, all right, they've all been killed. We want it to play a sound to group. Sound to group. The group is uh, CAS client. And the file will be uh, primary objective destroyed. Sounds like this. All primary objectives have been destroyed. You are cleared to return to base for mission debriefing. Done. Press OK. OK, so it's going to fire that. And we'll put a delay on it for five seconds. All right. We're also going to have a message to group. The group is cast client. And the text will be all primary objectives have been destroyed. You are cleared to return to base or debrief. I'm going to go for 10 seconds, clear view, and we'll also put a delay on that of five seconds. Okay. So it's going to pop up a message and a sound to the group cast client saying all primary objectives have been destroyed. You are cleared to return to base for debrief. All right, and then it's up to you if you want to hang around and keep blowing shit up, but you've completed your mission for today. Done. Lovely, lovely, lovely. All right, so that is that complete. And the trigger for that, all right, just to speed things up, we're going to put, uh, this is a quick way to test some triggers, if you want to test the destruction of a unit or a group to fire a trigger, we're going to put in a trigger zone here. So create trigger zone. Click it there. We're just going to call this explode. And then we'll just reduce the, uh, the diameter of it. Right there. Okay. Come right over the top. Done. So we've got a trigger zone called explode right there. And we're only doing this so we can test this trigger. And then once we've tested that it works, we're going to delete the, uh, the, the zone and delete this following trigger we're about to test. Okay, so this is our test. Uh, mission complete test. Okay, is the name of the trigger. And let's go with a condition of time more. Time more than 180 seconds okay after 180 seconds we're going to make the action called explosion in the zone explode altitude of one and the volume is as max you can do is 10,000 okay so the size of the explosion will be 10,000 so on a big massive explosion anything in that zone is going to get smashed all right a massive explosion will occur in that zone everything in there will get hit with a explosion worth a value of 10,000 all right, and that should kill our, uh, our convoy, and we should get the audio saying prime objectives destroyed, RTB, because the group two apps convoy has been killed by that explosion. All right, so we're going to quickly check that now, and then that is us done. Mission complete for us. All done. All right, so we're going to select CAS client. Okay, we'll turn our battery on. It's at three minutes. So 7.23 is when that explosion is going to happen. So we're just speeding time up here. All right, 7.23. Explosion has happened. Primary objectives have been destroyed. You are cleared to return to base for mission debriefing. Okay. And if we go to our F10 view, so another cool little trick. Scrolling down, we want two apps, so we're going to zoom in. So remember our guys were roughly uh, around here. 
think. So I'm going to left click and you're going to press left control F11. You can see there is a whole heap of stuff has been blown up down there. All right, so all of our... All of our units there have been blown up. All right, there's an explosion all over the place. It's killed them all. All right. So that's a cool way to test the destruction of things. Okay, so now we're going to delete... Not the group. Okay, so we're going to delete the zone. We don't need that anymore. And we're also going to piss off our... Well, it's already gone because it's deleted. So we're going to make that go green. So we know that works because when that group is killed, it popped up the message for us. So that is a CAS, basic CAS mission, right, with AI support, both uh, um, AI ground attack and AI cap built into the mission. We've got our target and we've also got our mission briefing, which is in the mission briefing tab in the blue task. All right. Boom, boom, boom. All done. So we'll just confirm, uh, save. Let's have a look how it looks. The mission briefing. Let's make sure it all looks nice. Select our CAS client. Load up. So we're just going to check this here. Okay, so mission overview. Objective, CAS mission, Operation Avalanche Predator, mission briefing. Okay, just make sure it all looks nice. Um, we'll probably put a space in between that one. Okay, so there's a space there. Everything else looks good. We've got our, probably put a space between that one as well. Last known position. Got our coordinates, elevation, support, 2A10s, coalition cap fighters be on standby and ready to scramble, Avrinx is on station. Okay, that looks good. So we'll just quickly tidy that up. And okay, so we're going to put a gap in between that and a gap in between that. And we are done. File, save, booyah. Two hours later, we're finished. Okay, so like I said, this is a massive um, start to finish mission, uh, but it went nice and slow for you guys. So hopefully it made sense and you played along at home and you have also just finished building your own mission and now you are good to go and fly it. And um, yeah, have fun. So if you like the video guys, make sure you go ahead and hit the like button. If you've got any questions, comments or queries, throw them in the comment section down below. And lastly, but not least, if you haven't already, um, I'd appreciate if you would hit the big old red subscribe button and subscribe to the channel. Helps me out a bunch. We are cruising our way up towards 4,000, now 4,000 subscribers to the channel, which is crazy. So thank you if you've already subscribed. And if you just subscribed, thank you very much. Appreciate your support. And yeah, on our next uh, mission editor video that I bring out, Okay, it'll be same kind of deal, except we're going to make a, a cap mission. So we're going to have a cap mission where you're going to be doing combat air patrol, shooting down and engaging enemy targets. All right, and we'll make some, uh, some cool story up that you're going to support, as well as have a option to um, provide top cover. Or if you're playing with a mate, they can do their ground attack and you can fly cap for them as well. All right, guys, until next time, peace out and I'll see you later.